Now that our slides have been ground down to a thickness approaching 30 microns, we're ready to begin the final stage of hand grinding and the routine inspection of our slides beneath the microscope to determine when we have reached the appropriate thickness. Until now, we've been using the forcipole and the geoform to polish our rock chips, frost our slides, and grind away rock from our thin sections. However, if you don't have this type of equipment, you can accomplish all of these steps using glass plates and powdered grits. Let's take a moment to step you through the materials that you'll need and the process of grinding and polishing by hand. In order to complete all of the polishing and grinding by hand, you will need at least four grit sizes, a coarse 60-90 grit, followed by progressively finer grits such as a 120-220, a 400, and finally a 600 grit size. Accompanying each grit, you will need tempered glass plates that will be dedicated exclusively to each grit size. To avoid confusion, we label the grit size on the underside of each plate with a sharpie. Once you have used a particular grit size on a glass plate for the first time, that should be the only grit size used on that plate going forward. Do not use different grit sizes on the same plate. When starting off with a freshly cut rock chip that needs to be polished for epoxying to a slide, you will want to start off with a coarse grit size of 6090 to even out any rough surfaces or saw blade marks and work your way up through the finer grit sizes until the surface is well polished. Working with powdered grits will inevitably result in some spillage off of the glass plate, so make sure you have a suitable workspace and are prepared for the mess. I like to set my glass plate inside of a cafeteria tray to capture the spillage and to facilitate an easier cleanup. To get started, make sure that the glass plate is clean and free of any grit or debris before using. Make sure you have a stable surface on which to set the glass plate and plenty of space to move your arms around. Sprinkle a spoonful or two of grit onto the glass plate and then add some water. Next, begin to mix the water and grit together with your rock chip to create something of a slurry. The mix should be watery enough so that the grit lies flat, but not so much that the water is running off of the plate. At first, you may be working in a small portion of the glass plate, but as you continue to mix the water and grit, you'll eventually want to work the sample all the way around the plate in order to maintain a relatively even surface across the plate. Do your best to maintain even pressure on your sample, but do not press down too hard. Rather, focus on pushing the sample gently across the surface, moving in small circles around the plate. Continue polishing the surface of your rock chips until any blade marks have been removed and the surface appears even before moving to a finer grit. It's probably a good practice to rinse and clean the glass plate and remove the coarse grit from the work area before proceeding to a finer grit. This will help avoid mistakenly using the wrong glass plate with the wrong grit size, or vice versa. Even if your sink is equipped with a sediment trap, which ours are, rinsing this amount of grit into the sink will quickly overwhelm it. Instead, we rinse our glass plates off into a separate container where the grit can accumulate and settle out for appropriate disposal later. When you are ready to proceed, make sure you have selected a glass plate associated with the next grit size and repeat the same procedure as before. Occasionally pull the chip from the plate, give it a rinse, and check the surface as it was done when using the forcipole to determine whether the chip is ready to advance to the next grit size. Over time, practice and experience will help you evaluate whether a rock chip has been polished enough and is ready for a finer grit size.
Once you've reached the 600 grit size, in addition to polishing your rock chips, this is also when you should frost your slides. Using the same technique to polish the rock chips, simply work the glass slide around the glass plate until you've achieved an even and frosted glass surface. Rinsing off your slide and drying it off will allow you to see whether it has been evenly frosted or not. Once all of your slides have been frosted and your chips have been polished with the 600 grit, you are ready to move on to the epoxying stage. Similarly, if you are grinding and polishing by hand, the same technique using glass plates and powder grits may also be used on your cutoff thin section to grind it down to its final thickness. Once you've retrieved your thin section from the cutoff saw, you can use the glass plates and starting with a 120-220 grit, begin to remove rock from your slide, eventually moving to the 400 and 600 grit sizes as the sample thins and approaches a final thickness of 30 microns. Since our samples have been ground down with the geoform, we're going to bypass the coarser grit sizes and start with the 600 grit. However, if you pulled your sample a bit early as a precaution and it still has some visible thickness to it, you may want to go ahead and start with a 400 grit size. Spread some 600 grit onto the glass plate and mix with water to create a slurry by working the slide around the plate in small circles. Do not press down hard on the slide, but rather do your best to maintain even pressure and focus on pushing the slide across the surface. Keep the sample flat and avoid rocking your hand back and forth at the wrist. Otherwise, you will end up with a tapered edge, thinner on the outside, and thicker in the center. Continue moving in small circles to grind the sample down more quickly, and up and down in a zigzag pattern for fine finishing. For our samples that have been prepared on the geoform, we won't worry about the fine finishing until we know we're approaching a thickness of 30 microns. When starting off, your thin section should have a thickness somewhere between 150 microns, so you'll want to start with the 600 grit. But if your sample is a little bit thicker than that, you'll probably want to start with the 400. Otherwise, it's going to take a very long time to grind your sample down to 30 microns. As I've mentioned before, most thin section failures occur at this stage. It can be very tempting when you're this close to having a finished thin section to rush the process and accidentally ruin your sample. All I can suggest is that you remain patient and take your time. I'm going to work this sample of Applite that we prepared around the plate for a little while before cleaning it off and giving it a look beneath the microscope. I've been working on this sample of Applite for a little while now and feel that it's time to check it beneath the microscope. There's no set time frame for how long it will take you to grind your sample down to a thickness of 30 microns as this is going to vary from sample to sample. Simply taking your time, paying close attention to the look and feel of your sample as you grind, and periodically checking it beneath the microscope is what's going to get you across the finish line. When you are ready to check your thin section beneath the microscope, carefully pull the slide from the glass plate and rinse it off. A beaker of water kept nearby is handy for performing an initial rinse to remove most of the grit, but you should perform a more thorough rinsing to remove all of the grit before placing it on the microscope stage. Keep a bead of water on top of the sample as this will serve as a temporary proxy for an eventual cover slip, but you may want to wipe off and dry the bottom of the slide. Next, place the slide beneath the microscope and see if you can identify any minerals in the thin section. 
Typically, you want to look for common and easily identifiable minerals such as quartz, feldspars, or micas in your sample. But the occurrence and abundance of these minerals is obviously going to vary. The more practice and experience that you have with identifying minerals with a petrographic microscope, the easier this task will be. If you are just starting out learning to make thin sections, you may want to practice with samples that are known to have common or easily identifiable minerals in them when viewed beneath the microscope. If you can't confidently identify any minerals, your sample is still too thick and you will need to continue grinding it down. However, if you can identify any minerals in the section, you are getting close and will continue slowly grinding, checking the sample until those minerals achieve the correct maximum interference color. Here at NOVA, we keep a laminated Michel LeVay color chart on hand to use as a guide when checking our samples beneath the microscope. I can identify some quartz and feldspar in our Applite sample, so we're getting close, but the colors tell me that we're not there yet. We'll pull our slide from the microscope and return it to the glass plates for some more grinding before stopping again and checking beneath the microscope. Continue this process of grinding and checking beneath the microscope for each of your samples until the interference colors of identifiable minerals match the known colors at a thickness of 30 microns. For example, quartz, a very common mineral, should show a maximum interference color of a pale straw yellow. However, if you're just starting out, don't hesitate to ask someone who is experienced at identifying minerals in thin section for guidance. If all goes well, you will have successfully prepared a rock thin section suitable for viewing and petrographic analysis. The only step remaining now is to preserve and protect our thin section by adding a glass cover slip.